If you want to easily create procedural materials and detailed textures for your 3D model, then Fluent Materializer got you covered. It is a great add-on that will help you create amazing materials using a completely procedural workflow, and it is all within Blender's Shader Editor. What I like about it is that you can easily create worn edges, ground dirt, surface imperfections, and much more through a node-based setup. The process is not only intuitive, but very easy and simple to pick up. After you finish building your materials, you can bake them into PBR maps to use a different texturing software or game engine. And you can do this fast. You just select your model and hit bake. Fluid Materializer offers a lot of features, but the biggest one is procedural material creation. It offers a long list of node groups that range from masks, surface imperfections, material details, and much more. The way you use Fluent Materializer is similar to using any node setup in your shader editor. You have your masks and mixed nodes, and you can layer as much as you want on top of each other. And the whole workflow is powered up by a long list of different assortments of procedural maps. The add-on also offers an extremely helpful feature, and that is the ability to bake only selected nodes. Not only that, but it automatically adds the baked map to the shader editor so you can use it immediately in your setup. But to use this, you are going to have to UV unwrap your model. Fluid Materializer offers 9 node group sections. First of all, imperfections. You have 16 procedural imperfections, and here you have fingerprints, liquids, liquid stain, smudges, scratches, and dust. Next is grunge. Here you can choose between 9 grunge maps, however the naming is not very descriptive. You have to experiment to see which one you're gonna use. It would be better to give each map a descriptive name, for example, grunge metal, grunge concrete, and so on. All grunge maps are very powerful and you can customize all parameters. You can see all the important parameters being exposed within the node group input. And you can always have your essential output results like roughness and normals, however the latter can be different depending on the map type. Next is patterns. Here you have 12 patterns and semi-procedural patterns. When it comes to liquid maps, you have liquid gradient, paddles, and water drops. Liquid gradient in particular is very interesting because it uses the gradients to simulate the pouring of liquids on the top of the model, which is extremely helpful if you are going for such a fact. Next is city. Here you have asphalt, puddles, road lines, and stucco, which is just a normal map. Next, fabric. In fabric you have knitted pattern, leather polyester pattern, and wrinkles. In normals you have four maps cracked paint, grain and paint details. In model you have 5 metal effects, brushed, galvanized, hammered, radial brushed and simple deform. Finally shaders. Here you have two shaders, cloth and glass shader. And the glass shader in particular looks amazing and has no fireflies when rendering. All you have to do is select the map you want to use and click add. All the maps have outputs which you need such as mask for mask maps, color, toughness, normals and sometimes height and color variation. For easy node tree creation, you can access the Fluent Materializer Pi menu by hitting F on the keyboard while you are in the shader editor at the top. With the power of procedural workflow, you don't have to UV unwrap your model because it is using generated physical 3D coordinates of your 3D model to project the textures back to your model. It is actually similar to triplanar projection in Substance Painter, for example. However, there is one case where you will need to UV unwrap your model, and that is, of course, baking. If you want to use Fluent Materializer Baker to bake all your PBR maps, you're going to have to UV unwrap your model. To do this, you can choose the resolution of your maps and the samples count. The higher, the better the quality is. Now, if you want to bake all the PBR textures, you just click Bake PBR Maps. All the maps will be saved automatically in the folder next to your Blender file. You also have the Bake Mask Node section where you can bake any selected mask node in your shader editor. This is helpful if you want to stack multiple textures together or if you want to export all these different masks to a different software like Substance Painter. If you want to take a look at this add-on, you can find the links in the description. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have something to add, you can leave it in the comment section below as usual. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much and I'll see you 
in the next one.